You know, I really like tea. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video with me giving my thoughts and a kind of a basic review of Agents of Mayhem. I completed this game, did my full series on it, did everything there was to do in it. Uh, all the missions, I upgraded all the agents, all 15 of them, to level 40. Collected all the Legion tech, all the Elite tech, all the Gremlin tech, got all the skins for the weapons and the agents, all the car skins and all the different cars themselves. Uh, what else did I do? Let's see. Um, I got all the achievements done, as you can see, 100%. And I think that's basically it. Did all the main story missions and little side activities and stuff as much as possible. Uh, so what did I think about the game? Well, the gameplay is very varied and fun. It was it was definitely a very fun series that I enjoyed a lot, but the gameplay was mostly what I ended up carrying it. Because you have a squad of three different agents that you can customize as you unlock more of them and as you play the different missions and whatnot. And they have such different varied play styles and different things to learn and do, and they have different ways to customize them with the tech and with the upgrades and whatnot. So that's a lot of fun, you know, for what it is. And uh, so that was, I enjoyed that a lot. They each had their little personal operations, little side missions uh, for each agent. I think there was like two apiece, and then they had the main story missions. So those were a lot of fun, you know. They had some little cool concepts and ideas. Uh, that being said, a lot of the game got a stale pretty quickly because there is a definitely a big grinding factor in this game like after you get through the main missions and the side activities really all there is to do is go around and collect skins and tech and what you have to do to get legion tech is do this activity called legion wares which is basically a little bit like an mmo light dungeon um i would compare it per se maybe the dungeons in fortnite save the world is the most similar thing i've played and imagine you're doing that, but you're doing it over and over again in order to earn all of the tech. Uh, that got a little stale pretty quickly. Now, I thought I was going to have to farm more for upgrade cores in order to uh, maximize all the agents. Because once you get past level 20, you're no longer upgrading them with XP. You're upgrading them with upgrade cores. And I thought I was going to have to grind a stinking ton to get all those upgrade cores. Because you need a huge amount. Let's see, you need 20 cores per agent. There's 15 agents. That's 300 cores, but then you need another three cores for each agent to upgrade something else. Uh, so that would be 45. So imagine like 345 cores. It's a lot of cores to earn. So the, probably the best ways to upgrade cores or to earn upgrade cores in this game is just do different activities like outposts to, you know, send agents out around this map, collect upgrade cores that way uh, to f get your wanted level up and then fight the boss. And then that gets you an upgrade core and stuff like that. There's also little crystals you can collect around the map, which is something else we did. We collected all those. We did all the little training room activities down here. Those give you upgrade cords as well. Um, but like I said, I thought I'd have to grind a lot more for those than I actually did. So that was nice. It wasn't that grindy in that respect. But man, trying to get that tech was a huge pain. Additionally, there was an achievement called Contract Thrower, which was my last achievement I had to get. Uh, and I didn't do this on stream because a lot of people were kind of <laughs> honestly sick of seeing the game at this point. Uh, but for this one, you have to complete 15 connected contracts. Now, what this mechanic is, is you go in here to missions and then you go to contracts. And expired contracts, that's fine. And you have to do one of these contracts up here. Now, these are daily contracts. You can do up to three a day and they'll refresh. Basically, you'll open one up. And then you can make it as private or just ones for that you do with friends. Or you can make it public so anybody playing the game can do it. And then your progress towards the contract counts for both. And it's basic stuff like get certain locations, do layers, kill certain types of enemies. Now, these are really hard. And some of these are nearly impossible to do without having other people to do them with. Because you can only do them in a 24-hour period. Uh, I found it difficult to do one or two, much less three. But I... Did them little by little. I spent hours doing this and working on these. And I finally got the 15 I needed. Now, this is the rarest achievement in the game. Like, less than 2% of all the people who've played this game have it. So, for that, I'm very happy and I am very proud about that. And even with the very small number of people that play this game, there are still people doing these contracts. Like, for example, look, this guy Archangel, his is 100% complete. Right? And then you got Silent Ronin, he's at 3%. Like, I could join this Archangel's contract, 
and then have it done and out of the way. That would be one less contract I'd have to do. So there's situations like that. Like people are still playing it. You still have people to play with, but not a whole lot. And a lot of them will join the contract, but not even carry their own weight. So that's a bit of a problem in and of itself. Uh, the story, I didn't really care for too much. I found it, it was, it was mediocre at best. There was nothing super positive or super great about it. Uh, really what it mostly was, it was just this typical superhero of, oh, this guy's trying to take over the world. Oh, this bad person turned good has got all these agents together and we're going to take them down one by one. Uh, but it was kind of all over the place. It didn't make much of a sense. And the ending was very, um... It was not satisfying at all. Let's just say it that way. Basically, the ending, without spoilers, consisted of the villain being defeated and then him having to answer to his superiors. And then that's it. It kind of left you off on a little bit of a cliffhanger, but like at the same time, not really one. Like It was just sort of like, oh, I guess we're done now. Uh, okay. You know, I think probably out of all the games I've ever played on my channel that that have had a story to them, you know, not counting, like, multiplayer games that have very little backstory. This one has probably been the most lackluster story I've played. Uh, and that's a shame. That's really a shame, because I would say that Agents of Mayhem is a game that had so much potential, because it had it had this cool world, it has all these cool concepts with the agents and with playing things, and they put great amounts of design and talent into designing these agents and their varying play styles, but they didn't really do a whole lot with them. This could have been a fun co-op game. It could have had some fun multiplayer mechanics. And it could have been like a really, really good single-player game. Uh, but it wasn't. It was just it was just kind of mediocre in most areas. Like I said, the gameplay was fun. But you never really had an objective to back it up. You just had kind of the story to play through. And then you have things to upgrade. And that's it. Uh, it had some RPG elements in it. Like you would gather materials. And you would craft tech with them. And then use the tech to fight the enemies. Uh, honestly, a lot of the mechanics, even the art style, will remind me of Fortnite Save the World more than anything else. I know a lot of people compare it to Overwatch. I've never played Overwatch, so I don't know. Uh, but Fortnite Save the World, it was somewhat similar to. Um, the other major, very major issue with this game is it is incredibly, incredibly buggy. Like, don't get me wrong. This game was made by Volition. All Volition games are buggy. The Saints Row games are buggy. They did another series of games I've never played. I imagine they're buggy too. But this is far, far more buggy than all of those. Even Saints Row 2. And I'll tell you why. Let's see. The game will occasionally crash. Not often. I think maybe... I've been playing this game for 74 hours. It crashed maybe three times. Three or four times in that 74 hours. So not too bad. But it will just randomly crash. Other times it will randomly freeze. Usually going to and from the arc. Um, what else? Let's see. One time I got into my car and I, instead of like seeing from the back of the car when I was driving from a rear view like you normally do, I was now seeing from the front of the car like I was the car itself, but I was seeing underground. So that was really weird. I remember I was just driving around, just played with that on there just because everybody was getting a huge kick out of it. Uh, but the only way to fix that and the only way to fix most of these bugs is just to restart the game. Also, one time I couldn't, I was playing with my agents, I just couldn't shoot my gun or use my abilities. Uh, there were times when I couldn't activate mission markers. There was this one mission where I was having to fight this giant boss, Steel Toe, and it just said I won the mission before I even defeated the boss out of nowhere on my second attempt. So that was weird. It just gave me credit for completing it when I hadn't done so. Um, and yeah, just really, really weird stuff like this. Now, you can play at certain levels, but... Once you get past a certain point in the game, you can see I've got to level 0, new recruit. This game will go up to level 15 in difficulty. But at, in the end game, there is no point to playing on higher difficulties because all those give you is extra XP and extra cash. When you're this far along in the game, you're earning cash passively. There is no point in getting any more cash. And all your heroes are upgraded, so there's no point in getting XP. So there's really no incentive or benefit to playing on anything above level zero when you're just killing enemies and collecting upgrade cores and trying to get contracts done which just count the number of agents or not agents uh enemies that you have killed so also uh, this is a little bit of a minor thing but it was incredibly annoying whenever you would teleport into the world you would select your squad right and you would click deploy and every single time without fail it is going to give you this exact same cutscene. This one right here. All three of them say some little catchphrase. They stand here. 
You hear it's ramp up, and then they run down to the door and jump out. There is no way to skip this. If you hit the escape button, space bar, enter, mouse clicks, nothing. Nothing can skip this. And it's like, well, Kess, a little 15 seconds here and there isn't going to hurt you. It's not. But you have to go back and forth between the world and the arc several times within the game to send out heroes on expeditions for the global conflict, uh, to earn, to get your passive cash, to craft tech, or whatever, right? There's a ton of stuff you have to do at Ark that you don't, that you can't do down here. So you'll need to go back to Ark. And going back is fine. When you go back, they show you this little quote on this screen before they deploy you back. It's like some little, it's a quote from an agent, and they say mayhem knows. This isn't that annoying. You know, I can live with this because this is sometimes funny and interesting. But I don't want to see the same agents run down a boardwalk and jump out every time. Okay, at least give me the option to skip it. But there is no option for that. It's little things like that that are just super, super annoying. And like I said, the game was buggy as it was. The story wasn't super great. The gameplay was fun. Don't get me wrong. I had fun playing this game and I did enjoy this series for what it was worth. But I felt like it was just super underdeveloped. And the sad news is, is this was definitely a high budget game and there was definitely a lot of love poured into it. You can see which is the design of the characters and their little personal stories and whatnot, which again, never reached a very satisfying conclusion. Um, but this game flopped. And I think there are so many games out there that were not super great or super special or anything, like Watch Dogs or, that's the first one off the top of my head, but there's games that were maybe not great but then they got sequels that have, were so much better and everybody enjoyed a lot. And I think Agents of Mayhem has the potential to make for a great sequel. But I don't think that's going to happen because it just was sort of a commercial flop. It was probably one of the worst selling games of 2017. And it's sad. I mean, it, in the first, after 30 days, there was a 30-day patch release for this game. And it got over 700 bug fixes. And then there was a 90-day bug patch, which fixed even more stuff, and yet it's still buggy, and in some respects still broken. Let me give you guys an idea of something that's broken, okay? So, over here is a file database for your agents, okay? It's called Mayhem Database, and there's agent files, and you can read little information about them, right? Now, these things unlock whenever you do contracts for the agent. So, for example, what that would be is, like, if you go to Missions here and you go to contracts, and you go down here, um, like this one's for Fortune, this one's for Fortune, this one's for Braddock, right? These are things you could do for those particular agents, and then that progress would count on their statistics, and it would unlock these files for you to look at. I don't know why I'm back here. I guess I had to go back there to look at the missions. Here's the problem. Those don't count. There is a bug in the game where it won't count contract completion. And it's super, super random. Daisy here, look, down here under contracts completed, 13. It counts for her just fine. Braddock, I can't do more than four with her. I've done over 10 contracts for her. It never counts anymore past four, so I can't open this and read it. Fortune, I can't get, I can't get one contract complete with her. I've done like a half a dozen for her. Never counted. Johnny Gant, contracts completed, zero. Same deal, and I've completed several contracts for him as well. This is a bug in the game where part of the game that's locked, you can never access because you can never do what's needed to actually oh, unlock it because of the bug present in the game. It never actually works. And they're not going to fix this two years later because after the 90-day patch, they just kind of left the game dead in the water. And it's just stuff like that that just really, really stinks about it. So, but yeah... Like I said, I enjoyed this game. Don't get me wrong. I'm probably giving it a lot more criticism than praise, which I think is deserved. But I enjoyed it. I did have fun with this game. And I think you could probably have a fun time with it as well if this looks like the kind of game you'd be interested in playing. Because there's fun to be had here. But there's just so much disappointment in it that just makes it feel um, like a bit of a letdown. Also, you see Legion Tech on the back there. It says 108 out of 108. That's not even the right number. When I got all 108, I was like, oh, wait a minute. There's still like a dozen pieces of Legion tech I still need to get every single piece, which I had to go back and grind more dungeons for. So, yeah, uh, that's basically how I felt about it. A fun game, but one that lacks 
a lot of stuff that had the potential to bring, which I think is honestly a shame. Uh, should you play it? Well, I think you should watch some videos on YouTube, maybe look at my series, watch an episode of one of my walkthrough videos, and see if maybe the gameplay is something you would enjoy. Then, and only then, I would recommend that you wait for it to go on sale. Because this game usually sells for $30, it's not worth $30. Now, when it goes on sale, you can get it for like 5 bucks. It's easily worth 5 bucks. I mean, I did put 74 hours in this game. I got a lot of time and fun out of it, uh, even though some of it was just kind of grindy gameplay. There is definitely fun to be had. Like, they put a lot of content into this game. Um, but, you know, there's problems with it, too. Also, one thing I forgot, which I should really mention, is something that I absolutely hated about this game, was if you go down into the world and you look at the map, there's little different icons of, like, little side activities you can do to earn XP or cash or... Um, crafting materials or agent skins or whatever. Here's the problem with this. You remember in Saints Row, which was the game that this is set in the same universe for. In Saints Row, you'd have these side activities. You would complete them and then they were done, right? As a completionist, I love that. I could do all these side activities. The map would be would turn purple and you would have like a full finished map with no icons on it, which was immensely satisfying. Here, it does not work like that. If you go down here to the city map, look at all these icons, okay? All of these regenerate after you do them. If I go over here and do Recon Run, for example, after I get back, it's still there. Hostage Rescue, if I do this, it goes away, sure. Then it comes back in a few minutes. There's always going to be stuff like this to do. And the fact that you can never complete all of these kind of stinks, honestly. Also, you see these little flags right here with these timers on them? These are outposts. When you take them over away from enemies, it becomes a man control outpost, but that only lasts for a couple of hours, or in this case, half an hour, uh, before it's regained by Legion, and you have to go back and reconquer it again. Now, yeah, you get rewards and stuff for doing so, but I would rather just complete everything and have it done. And this was done on purpose, right? They actually said, one of the developers said that they were trying to get away from the paint the map purple nature of Saints Row. But this is not a good feature. This, this is not a good feature at all. This is something that I don't like because I like going and getting objectives and getting everything done. But you can't really do that in a world where everything regenerates. So what I actually ended up having to do is just focus on getting the missions done, earning all the tech, getting the achievements done. You guys basically get it. But the fact that I couldn't do everything and just have it finished and win kind of stunk for me so yeah that wasn't super super great but that's my thoughts on the game guys like i said uh leave your thoughts down in the comments below i would appreciate it. check the game out for yourself and let me know what you think uh it's there's definitely fun to be had but it could have definitely been a lot better so thank you very much for watching i will be going live again this monday we'll be starting a brand new series on a game called doom 2 which I'm very, very excited to play because the first game was fantastic. I'm very much looking forward to the sequel. But until next time, I've been your host, Cast Gaming. This has been Agents of Mayhem, my thoughts on it. A big special thank you to our T-Squad Plus members whose names are appearing on the screen right now. I definitely appreciate all you guys, and you all mean the world to me. Uh, but yeah, until next time, I will see you all at the top. I'm about to end this man's whole career. Aside from my soul, I, 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 I